Hi, I'm Joe from JD Medical and I'm here to talk to you about the JDM Safety 20 and JDM Safety 30 Safety Pressure Relief Valve. These valves are available for order through Victor Medical at 1-800-888-8908 or by contacting your local Victor Medical representative. Uh, the JDM Safety 20 and JDM Safety 30 Safety Pressure Relief Valves are designed to relieve circuit pressure above their indicated pressure rating. So the JDM Safety 20 is rated for 20 centimeters of water pressure and is indicated by the black relief valve. The JDM Safety 30 is rated for 30 centimeters of water pressure and is indicated by the red uh, relief valve. These valves are designed to relieve at that preset pressure. Centimeters of water pressure is the common uh, unit of measure for the circuit pressure in an anesthesia machine. Um, so the 20 uh, is your most commonly used valve. Uh, 20 centimeters of water pressure is the max that you really want your circuit pressure going to um, and anything above that will be relieved by this valve. The 30 is for use generally where you find ventilators used a lot um, or if there's any specific need to go to a little bit higher than 20 centimeters of water pressure uh, you would use a 30. Uh, by far the most common is the JDM Safety 20 uh, for general use so for demonstration purposes we're going to focus on the JDM Safety 20. Uh, the JDM Safety 20 fits into the circuit, uh, the rebreathing circuit of the anesthesia machine and will relieve uh, excess pressure building up due to the closure of the pop-off valve, um, accidental depression of the occlusion valve, uh, or equipment malfunction. Uh, the valve relieves uh, any excess pressure and vents it into the exhaust of the anesthesia machine. This valve can be attached to any existing anesthesia machine uh, and will function uh, according to its specifications, uh, making sure that you don't cause any pulmonary barotraumas or any have any uh, anesthesia accidents due to overpressurization. Uh, so for demonstration, we have a standard uh, JD Medical BT-110 small animal anesthesia machine. This anesthesia machine is uh, similar to any anesthesia machine you might find in the field. Um, you have a oxygen flow meter, uh, pressure manometer for surge pressure, a uh, circle absorber system with uh, expiratory and inspiratory directional valves, an isofluorine vaporizer, and a pop-off valve. Um, I am going to demonstrate uh, the function of the anesthesia machine uh, without the safety relief valve, uh, then we'll attach a safety relief valve and see how they operate differently under uh, different emergent situations with the pop-off valve, occlusion valve, and general use. Uh, so, with no safety relief valve installed, we have a, a breathing circuit on the machine um, and a bag in place of the patient so we can build some pressure. Uh, and I have a bag here set up on the bag port of the anesthesia machine. Uh, right now we'll leave the pop-off valve open um, and we'll see that no pressure or just a little bit of back pressure will build up, but no real significant pressure will build up in the machine. Um, if for some reason the pop-off valve is closed, either during a pressure check and it's forgotten to be opened, or if a service company is in and is running a pressure check, they forget to leave it open, uh, or if for some reason there's a malfunction with the pop-off valve, the pop-off valve is closed, and we'll see that we get a significant pressure into the dangerous range, um, and we definitely don't want that to happen. So in this case, we can relieve that by opening the pop-off valve, which takes time. Um, or disconnecting the circuit, uh, but then the patient is disconnected from the machine, um, and you have no indication that the pressure's gone that high unless you're watching the bag or the, uh, or the pressure manometer. Um, we can achieve the same thing if we depress the occlusion valve and input pressure into the machine. It'll stay up at that high level um, where we're causing injury to the patient uh, again, it's easily relieved, but by the time it's noticed, the damage may already be done. So the uh, holding the occlusion valve, somebody forgetting, um, or a malfunction of the occlusion valve, if it's stuck closed, will allow that pressure to build. Um, it is easily relieved, but by the time it's noticed, the pressure may all, or the uh, damage may already be done, and the pressure is already built up in the machine. Uh, so now. We can connect the safety relief valve 
Um, it can be connected to either the expiratory or inspiratory port of the anesthesia machine. Um, I generally prefer to put it as close to the pop-off valve as possible, so it's easier to connect, but it will function just fine on either. So it goes in place of the exhaust and the circuit connection. And now we have it connected to the patient circuit so it will relieve excess pressure and relieve that into the exhaust of the machine where it'll be taken out by the scavenger um, and you'll have no exposure to the uh, operators whatsoever. Um, so we can demonstrate this by closing the pop-off valve and we'll build up a little pressure. And you can see it opens up as the pressure goes above 20 and quickly relieves it down. If there's any sustained pressure, which we can achieve by opening up the pop-off valve, or opening up the flow meter with the pop-off valve closed, you can see that it won't build above 20 centimeters of water pressure. It'll hold there and not allow you to go over that so you have time to figure out what the problem is, open up the pop-off valve and relieve that pressure. Uh, the same thing can be achieved with the holding the occlusion valve down. If we go over, it relieves that pressure down to a safe range, and you can realize, oh, we left the occlusion valve depressed and, uh, and relieve that pressure. Um, a lot of questions have come in about uh, how to bag patients with the safety relief valve in place. Um, you can leave the safety relief valve in place when bagging patients. Um, the, if you hold the occlusion valve down and fill the machine, and build up a little pressure, you can easily achieve a higher pressure and bag the patient by giving a breath. A little bit will escape, but not enough to completely deplete the machine. The valve just doesn't open up open up enough to allow all of the gas to escape. So you're still maintaining pressure um, and you're still able to bag the patient, um, but uh, you aren't relieving all of the gas. So you can supplement with a little extra oxygen flow to uh, compensate for that little bit of gas that's escaping every time if you're, re if you're bagging for a prolonged period of time, but under general use, if you're just delivering a couple of breaths, you shouldn't need to do that. Um, it should operate normally. Um, you might, you'll hear a little bit of the valve opening, but the function will still remain. Um, you won't have any problems doing that. Um, for uh, general care of the units, um, you can leave the circuit disconnected just to let it uh, air out if any condensation builds up. You generally won't see any condensation build up in there as if it's on the inspiratory side. On the expiratory side, uh, you may get some condensation buildup, so it's not a bad idea to let it air dry. Uh, cleaning it, clean, you can clean it like you would any, uh, any other component of the anesthesia machine, mild soap and water, um, nothing too caustic, certainly no alcohol, uh, but alcohol you don't want to use on any component of the anesthesia machine. Um, there is no scheduled maintenance for it. There aren't really any replacement parts. Um, nothing should go bad on regular intervals. Um, it's it's generally a very self-contained and simple piece of equipment uh, that uh, can definitely save a lot of lives and prevent a lot of injuries. Um, so there's no routine maintenance for it, um, but it can be checked for function uh, during your yearly preventive maintenances or anything like that. So um, that pretty much wraps up the function and use of the uh, JDM Safety 20 and Safety 30 Safety Pressure Relief Valve. Um, again, you can order this valve by contacting Victor Medical at 1-800-888-8908. Uh, or talking to your local Victor Medical representative. Again, I'm Joe from JD Medical, and thanks for watching.